اوكي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم اما بعد um, all right so we are still in the uh, briefing uh, briefing week so it's uh, it's some sort of background um, uh, course the course uh, background of our course i mean we are discussing last uh, we, last class we discussed the summary of the whole semester right so the uh, um, what we are going to learn for 12 weeks uh, by the way it is not 14 uh, it is it has been reduced to 12 weeks so i think uh, so we uh, uh, probably you may have uh, you may not have the revision week uh, probably i think or maybe you have few days for the revision week that's so because of two days for revision two days only yeah yeah two days <laughs> I see. I'm so sorry. Yeah, but but we will finish. We will try to finish early so that I think I'll give you more time for revisions, if possible, inshallah. Okay. Uh, usually you may you get one week like ten days. Uh, but this time I know everybody is uh, struggling with this uh, delay that uh, we are supposed to start our uh, semester in September. Now we are starting in October. All right so last uh, class i was discussing with you uh, the um, the summary of the entire semester right so i was telling you that why we are actually doing uh, this course uh, how actually the name history of islamic economic thought is actually coming to fit into this course so um now uh, we are going to going into our first um, first uh, chapter which actually we are going to talk about uh, the uh, philosophy of uh, Islamic economic thought all right so uh, today what I have is actually so before I go into in detail uh, today what I'm going to give you is actually basically only three uh, figures three uh, diagrams that I'm going to share with you. Um, with this uh, three uh, diagrams, I think what you're going to learn today is actually um, perhaps it is also a continuation of the question that our good brother asked last class. Very good question, right? So, um, so we are going to uh, look into uh, what modern uh, conventional economic thought has been uh, structured in what way that they actually um, portray themselves and uh, why is it actually uh, we are not there right so if you want to talk about the history of economic thought uh, now the course is i know history of islamic economic thought but there are so many um, so many universities and institutes they actually offer the course history of economic thought by economic thought, they are referring to, um, they are referring to, you know, the conventional economic thought. Now, um, when they actually show uh, that um, uh, uh, the history, so I think this is the diagram that I'm showing you right now. This is similar to this uh, figure that actually what they are going to propose. This is actually what economic thought. This is how we actually, of course, they also say that it is not Adam Smith. It is even before Adam Smith. Um, the, I mean, they are actually referring to the history of, you know, starting from Aristotle. Uh, like I told you last time, uh, that there is a need that we need to learn uh, economic ideas uh, from ancient Greece, and we need to talk, we need to we need to discuss the major uh, tenets of the Greek philosophers, starting from uh, you know um, uh, Hesiod, Xenophon, and Aristotle, Plato. You know these are the de human Democritus. So these are the uh, philosophers actually. Uh, that we need to discuss. I'm telling you now, um, uh, especially this, uh, this this figure, actually, uh, we need to see where exactly is the history of Islamic economic thought. But by looking at this, you don't see it, right? So look at it. For example, they said it started from philosophers. So they mentioned it is Aristotle. So by mentioning Aristotle, they mentioned the entire Greek philosophers, right? So you know that the timeline of Greek philosophers, it's um, 
before um, 350 BC, right? So you may have a 500 or maybe you may have a 850, maybe you can, you can call it like this, from 850 BC to 322 BC. I think you know why I'm actually giving you a big number and a small number because it is BC, you know that. So entirely, you know, um, if you look into that, um, it is a few centuries before uh, Jesus was born. You know, Hazrat Isa alayhi salatu was was born. So um, basically, uh, they have uh, Greek philosophers and then they have also the other, the other side is actually Byzantine, the Roman, the Roman philosophers. So, um, so, so they have this uh, philosophy that they call it Greek or a Roman. Uh, according to our idea, uh, like uh, last week we discussed, uh, anything that good, any good values uh, that 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 is actually has been spread out in this universe is is only because you know the Creator wanted to make it. That's the reason why He is the one. Al Rahman Allamahul Bayan, خلق الإنسان وعلمهول بيان. Right. So He is the one who created man, and then He is the one who taught him the bayan. So bayan is actually it, it, it's everything. You know, all kind of knowledge, right? Allama Adam al Asma al Husna, right? He 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 actually uh, taught Adam والسلام, all sort of, you know, uh, Asma. Asma is actually, uh, you, you can't simply translate Asma into nouns uh, or verbs, you know. You cannot simply translate the word Asma. That's why when I talk to you, when I said, when I say in Arabic terms, Let's say I say taqwa. How do you translate the word taqwa into English? It's very difficult. You know, do you want to say fear? Do you want to say conscious? Do you want to say pious? Do you want to say righteous? It's actually everything. Uh, part of taqwa is fear. Part of taqwa is conscious. So, 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 so if you look into, into this perspective, I think you can't even translate the entire Quran into there is no 100% 100% authentic translation available because it is impossible you may have you can say close to Arabic translation close to Quran maybe 90% maybe 80% maybe 70% right that's because um, Allah uh, Prophet, uh, even Allah said himself inna anzalnahu Quranan Arabiyan so aql, Allah wanted the Arabs to understand properly. So the real understanding comes from Arabic word. So, so that is the idea, you know, of you know uh, asma, the word al asma, Adam al asma. So now Allah when say he he taught asma, we only know that you can say that in according to the interpretation we can say the words. It could be the words, it could be the nouns, it could be the philosophy, it could be the ideology, it could be everything all sort of sciences uh, is it only social sciences is it only applied sciences these are the things that we actually uh, classify according to our knowledge according to our need we actually say this is human science this is applied sciences yeah and then we have medical sciences we have uh, you know uh, so we, we have pharmaceutical sciences and then the other side we have uh, management sciences you know so many things that we actually classified into so many but uh, originally speaking, Allah has um, taught everything to man. So, so if there is anything that you know um, good about Greek philosophy or Roman philosophy, all those good must be conveyed by the prophets, because prophets, you know, what is the job of the prophets? The prophets are the one who brought the hikmah, the wisdom, to the human being. They were given this wisdom. They were given this book of wisdom, and then they came to pupil and then they conveyed the message. Yeah, this is what actually has been done. So there's a possibility that uh, in next week when we talk about the Greek philosophy, and then I'm going to give you a few names of the Greek philosophers. There's a possibility one of them could be uh, could be a prophet. We don't know that because we Allah didn't talk about them. Allah said there are many things that you don't know. 
uh, we only told you, we're only telling you those that you need. So maybe Allah didn't talk about uh, the prophets in China. Allah didn't talk about the prophets in India. Allah didn't talk about the prophets in European countries. Uh, maybe it, that it, 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 it's not necessary uh, because he wanted to, he actually focusing, he is actually facing um, the Arabs. And then he talks about the prophets of Sham, the prophets of Egypt, the prophets of, you know, Tunis, the prophets of, you know, you know, the surroundings, Yemen, uh, other places. So he talks about all those uh, prophets that related, uh, related directly to Jews and Christians and then Arabs. Yeah. So, so what I'm trying to tell here that, uh, uh, yes, uh, the, those are the Greek philosophy or Roman philosophy. Those are whatever the right things are there is actually also from the creator. Okay, that's that's one side. Then they are bringing Bible, right? Aristotle, then they are bringing the Bible. So if you look at the Bible, yes, then that Bible, of course, it is actually Injil, right? That's what we call Injil is actually given, revealed to uh, Hazrat Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, they call Jesus. So now, um, if you look into uh, these two, one is actually philosophy, the other one is actually religion, right? Then you have um, scholars like Thomas Aquinas, uh, 1270. This, this group of people, the one who followed Thomas Aquinas, Saint Thomas Aquinas, he is the one who actually bringing the science and religion together, right? Philosophy and religion together. So these people called scholasticism, scholastic, right? You need to remember the word scholasticism, scholastic. So these are scholastic people. There are so many, and one of them is actually Thomas Aquinas. Then he actually again religion, science, philosophy, and religion. Then he's bringing up. Then you need now the practitioners, right? So when it comes to the practitioners, then the business people, uh, the people who are actually trading, who actually you know, most of the time how it was done, it was actually done uh, mostly. It was done like trading, importing, and exporting. What they do, you know that those days, um, you you if you remember the the story of Prophet Sallallahu before the Nubuwa, before he became 40, he was actually sent to Syria and other places um, for trading because he was actually taking uh, the Amwal the, the Khatija, huh? the, the Prophet's first wife, Khatija radiallahu anha, before the marriage, he was the person who takes who takes the uh, the the products, the the, the properties of Khadija and then he goes around and then he goes and then he goes to other markets, other countries, and then he sell, he sells and then he returns with profits and then he share. So he was basically doing murabaha, right? So now you know that those days, you know, this is actually they have the, um, they have cattle, they have actually carts, business and cars, and they need to bring it. What most of them they do is actually barter exchange. Huh? So this barter exchange actually, you know, giving things and taking things, whatever the things that is not going to be spoiled, you know, if it is actually meat and vegetables, they cannot take those things. So, but they will take other things like, you know, uh, textiles, you know, uh, leather items, you know, some other like, especially asas, they call it asas mean furniture items, you know, those things, even sometimes, you know, gems uh, uh, and also gold and silvers and those kind of things. Yeah, they actually take it and then they go and then they do the barter exchange. This is what they actually do. So now, now if you see so many, you know, um, you know, you know, Europeans coming back and then they have to do some trading, right? And then they started selling something. They started, you know, uh, selling through seas. Of course, the sea is actually the fundamental uh, route uh, for, you know, business, especially, you know, that uh, how um, how how um, Muslims in India, they become Muslims because of the traders. Uh, they came to a place called Kerala back in India. I think I think that is the first place where they go, even from Mecca, uh, if you look into Yemen, from Yemen to India, there is a straight line, 
uh, which actually is straight lane, which actually a uh, 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 transportation through ocean, you know, the, the sea, uh, sea, sea roads. So they come directly and then even uh, there is a story that there was a king, he actually embraced, he actually, sorry, he actually uh, became Muslim um, because, you know, he saw uh, the uh, the event of uh, Shaq al-Qamar, you know Shaq al-Qamar, I think some of you know, you know Prophet Sallallahu was once asked uh, to split the moon, if you know the story, you know, he, he was asked to split the moon and then with the, with the, with the permission of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, he was able to do that, he actually split the moon into two pieces and then there was a king uh, called Chera uh, back in India, that time, the, the real time when Prophet Sallallahu was living in the uh, 7th century. And then he, later some Arab traders came and uh, uh, talk about Islam. Alright, he, when he talk about Islam, um, the, the traders were talking about Islam and then the trader said that there is, a, there is a man called Muhammad and he is actually bringing this uh, religion called Islam and he said we should not do shirk and this and that, uh, so many things and he's actually not respecting, um, he's not respecting the, the, the people of, you know, I mean, I mean the, 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 the ancestors because ancestors actually doing the shirk and then he says that to, to throw away all those, idol, uh, all those idols and this and that. Then um, he say, he also the traders started talking, talking about the uh, Shaq al Qamar. He said, they said that he also said he can actually, um, he can actually, you know, split the moon, but we didn't see it. So people are talking that he split it. Then when the, when the story uh, reached to the, 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 to the king of Chera, and that time in India, and then he actually listened to the story, and then because he said, I literally saw when I was in my, when I was in my place, in my palace, I literally saw that thing was happening. So today I came to know that it was actually, that the story has a connection to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then he came back and then he said, I want to meet Prophet. Then all the way he went to Mecca, sorry, he went to Medina, and then he became Muslim. He became Muslim. There are some very few um, sources are saying that there were some king of India uh, came with you know with some pickles, you know because the um, this ginger and pickles you know uh, is very quite famous at that time. So they brought those things as a hadiyah and gave, and then they became Muslim. Uh, but unfortunately, unfortunately, when the when the king was coming back. Um, he actually uh, died on the way back in Yemen, somewhere in Yemen. Um, but he actually told his uh, friends that when you go back, you need to go back and then build a mosque. So remember, back in India, uh, right now, in that place, actually, we have a masjid that was built during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu it was built that time. Since now, it, the masjid is very, very old masjid, but we have that masjid in Kerala somewhere. You can call Kerala or Malabar, uh, the oldest masjid in India. Or masjid in India, of course, not masjid in India. Masjid in India. So um, that is the story. You need to know that, you know, the, the people who came selling something, trading. Uh, because even this story, when I discussed with um, our president, you know, because our president of IAUM, uh, Dr. Uh, Sri Daud Bakar, he actually knows the story and then he asked me to look into it and he was very surprised to know because he said his ancestors also came from that side, from Sri Lanka, from Kerala, you know, and then he was very much happy to share actually the, the message. Anyway, I'm just trying to tell you uh, that because of that, you know, those, those traders came through India and then because of that, mashallah, Islam came all the way to this region and everywhere. So what I'm trying, and then they also, Sahaba went to China, the traders, they came to, you know, Malaysia, they came to so many other places, Indonesia, and then mashallah, because of their trade, Islam actually came into existence. Now you need to understand how important trade is. Yeah, so now they have this uh, group of, you know, uh, traders, we call them merchantalists in 17th and 18th century. And then we have these uh, physiocrats, right? Then these merchantalists and then physiocrats, they are the one actually in during 17th, 16th, 15th century. These are the people are actually doing the business. 
tradings and everything they started doing you know bringing the policies they started you know doing negotiation this and that and then they started making this supply and demand you know these are the things was happening there are so many things actually one by one we will we will look into one by one inshallah i'm just giving you the summary of this uh, the, 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 this particular subject all right then uh, from there only we have the classical school of economic thought came out which is actually adam smith uh, in 1776 uh, let me just uh, show you one more uh, one more slide perhaps i can relate okay the other one is uh, this one all right so this one um if you see um um of course um, this one actually you can clearly see there is a greek, greek philosophers and then you have uh, roman lawgivers yeah and then and then you have this biblical time, biblical times. So, and so these three things together, you have the philosophy, you have the ruling, you have the religion. All these things came into Middle Ages. Then you have the church, Aquinas, and then scholasticism. This scholasticism is the one actually, you know, mingling of this religion and the ruling and the philosophy together. Then you have the rise of national states. Uh, these are the thing time 12th and 12th to 15th centuries the 300 years you know these are the time that you know the national uh, states actually started rising this is the time also um, you know um, many islamic muslim scholars also talk about the uh, national states like asaba uh, discussed by uh, Ibn Khaldun, you know, those are the things are there, mashallah. Ibn Khaldun talks about these national states uh, because when he talks about Asaba, you know, he also recently someone um, uh, uh, nicely, you know, he wrote someone from uh, Turkey, he wrote that, um, you know, is it America you now is America is, is it the, the civilization is falling like by looking into America, is it what Ibn Khaldun says many, many centuries ago. So he just want to, you know, connect uh, what Ibn Khaldun says and what's happening today. So no, because Ibn Khaldun talk about Asaba, right? This Asaba is actually, you know, uh, of course, uh, today uh, we are talking like, you know, I'm Indian and he is Malaysian, you know, he's a Bangladeshi, he's actually Chinese, you know. These are the... Um, these are the groupism is already there and because of this groupism we were able to uh, build our community build our culture build our tradition right so now of course you know uh, like for example you know people say uh, by indian be indian you know like for example by chinese be chinese or by malaysian be malaysian so these are the things are there and we are helping collaborating each other because of that you can say that the nationality is happening right uh, this asaba is actually uh, uh, asaba is actually what um, this is not asub this is asabiya asabiya is actually you know uh, looking into your own groupism like people are actually race they have the races uh, now even sometimes they are the same race but they may have so many differences you want to see there are so many examples of course you cannot only say that people are good with the race uh, but there's a possibility people are the same race, but still they are against each other. Like, for example, North Korea, South Korea, same race, but each other. Pakistan and India, same, but, you know, fighting each other. There are so many other examples also I can give you. So many like that, you know, people in neighboring countries also, you know, are hitting each other, this and that. So it's not about race, it's about the country, the nationality. Maybe they go with that. So let's say if uh, everybody lives in the same place, let's say um, there is a city, then the, all those city people helping each other, you know, they will say that, okay, uh, you are, even today also the Asabiya is available, you know, for example, uh, if you go to some city and you started, you wanted to uh, have a business and you wanted to start renting a, a a place then you know there might be there might be a question where are you from are you from this city that city okay you are coming from the other city but you want to do business here why so let us give priority for those who are from this city you know that okay so these are the things uh, why, why i'm telling this because this is important to understand the history because even khaldun talks about it you know we, we will talk about ibn khaldun in ninth or tenth week 
all right no need to wait until that time all right the things are happening so fast i don't know how long we have in this world right so whatever possible i just want to share with you because ibn khaldun actually talks about it he talks about you know this asabiya he says that you know like human being we have uh we have a life uh, so we been small we been infant and then child and then adult and then uh, teen and then became adult then we became mature when we were top of the mature once we reach like 45 50 top of the mature and we started declining slowly we have the illness we have you know the the back pain <laughs> we have the you know the leg pain this and that our eyesight is going slowly you know so after 50 60 you become you know become weak and weak and weak by 70 and 80 you become very weak huh? of course there are exceptional huh? like uh, mashallah we have few people in malaysia mashallah amazing even though they are 93 97 no one can stop them all right few exams are exa- exemptions are there but uh, totally speaking collectively speaking yes um so these are the things you know um um uh, of course uh, when you look at the human life uh, you can see that um, human life is actually um uh, you become mature once and then you you have to slowly go down uh, you need to slowly go down because you will fall down you, you will so 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 ibn khaldun talks about this you know amazingly he says that you know yes um there is a possibility that any uh, any nationality any national any groupism yes they are very strong together they will build their economy together they will build their society together they will go to the peak and then slowly they you know slowly they actually fall down same like the human being one the civilization will fall it, it, so he because he is the first historian you know um Uh, the one who criticized um you know uh, looking into history how do you look because there were so many other historians they started writing uh, the report of you know days and years of the people how they live you know they were actually uh, recording uh, writing the story of those people how how, how. but but ibn khaldun is the first person you know looking into different he was looking into the story and then he started looking into the re- reasons of falling reasons of rising and then he talks about it so 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 ibn khaldun uh, when he talk about you know the falling of a civilization then he says that is same like a human being you know like human falling so one day will come uh, the things will fall down so now you look at russia for example if you know about the the strength of soviet russia maybe i also don't know because i was not living that time maybe if i ask my father or my grandfathers then they will know one time russia was everything russia soviet russia was far and far and far stronger entity today you can see that it's broken into many pieces yeah so right so so the same thing you know the 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 the, the that's amazing article that i read you know i really enjoy reading he says that you know the america might be doing this but who knows maybe tomorrow the things may go down and um, I, I myself, in my experience, also I have seen so many changes like that. I'm, I'm, I don't want to just put only to the country. I also want to tell you this. Even sometimes some companies also, you know, may go start and then, you know, uh, going up on the top, and then top business, and one day has to go down. You know, if you know about, um, let's talk about, um, you know, the technology. Like for example. um nokia for example i don't know whether you know nokia or not because when i was 20s um of course um a few years back you know uh, we use we always run behind nokia uh the the the, the, the we were, we were waiting to see the new launch of nokia when it will come you know they have the slide phones they had uh, the, the the buttons here and there you know we used to see that but today i'm just thinking you know um where is it actually where what happened to nokia right it was actually in the top of the business and today is we don't know where it is actually so remember that everything is like that you know if maybe today mashallah google is doing it maybe apple is doing it iphone is doing it but look at the reality it has to go down you know it has to go down one day and then somebody else 
so here actually um i remember the quranic verse very much related fawqazi kulli ilmin alim this one allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fawqa the kulli ilmin alim so if you think you are the best you know everything remember that <laughs> there is somebody better than you who knows better than you this is what allah says you know so it has to come so the reason i wanted to bring this here because you know uh, look at these um, centuries you know rise of national states of course um, this is what actually you know uh, there were nationalities given and then asabiya came and then started falling and started actually sorry started improving when it came uh, the beginning of the modern uh, capitalism was there so when there was a modern capitalism then you had you had uh, english mercantilism and then in german people they call it cameralism and then the french people they call it you know colbertism and then you had these physiocrats physiocrats also a kind of french uh, kind of initiative so these are the things are there then from so many ideologies then adam smith was able to write wealth of nation in 1776 so this is what actually economics actually came into the mainstream uh, so um so now uh, by looking at this picture you know um, just yes the reason i wanted to bring this picture as a brief to what we are going to talk about in next week uh, because I, i i want you to know that there is no place for islamic economic thought look at it this is what actually in any economic school of thought in any economic school that talking talking about economic thought they will only share this they will only i don't want i don't i don't want to I, i didn't want to take this away from you because i didn't want to just talk to you about you know islamic economic thought is there this is it this is it no i want you to be because i don't think you are learning um economic thought as a as a separate uh course do you do you have any separate course that you actually learning economic thought let me know if you have anything if you i know here and there you learn something mashallah but as a economic thought you don't you don't you don't have uh, separate classes for economic thought isn't it so when we talk about islamic economic thought you know but of course i'm we are going to talk about those scholars who contributed to economic thought but i want to also give you the reality of what actually today's economic scholars think about islamic economic thought because they don't give us any space this is what actually was a big issue at the beginning of 19th century when um the records has been started collecting when they started writing books of books about economic thought you know they didn't actually uh, bring any muslim scholars names and uh, we totally been forgotten we been abandoned so this is what actually that this is the true story this is what actually happened so i think that's why um we need to understand this this is all right so to bring you uh, why where exactly we are then let me just bring you the next slide i think that would be the last slide for today um this is a one right okay so now you can see that um um uh this is actually um you know uh, where exactly this is actually the place of muslim scholars in the family tree of mainstream economics now now we need to put that thing in between um according to the time chronologically speaking yeah uh remember um i also told you i didn't want you to be i know away from the real um uh, essence of this course you know i'm not actually we are not, you know the reason why we actually made made this course as a fundamental i mean as a core course for the department it is very important that you because you are you are our agent you know tomorrow i don't think many um i don't think many uh, many universities actually teaching this course i don't think it is quiet um i know many universities are teaching fiqh i know they are talking about fiqh uh, they talk about muamalat because it is related to islamic finance all right 
So I don't think how many universities outside, uh, institute outside actually talking about, you know, our contribution to this, because that's why you are our agents. And uh, you, you are not taking this course just because, you know, you need to get your core course passed or maybe some for grade. No, it's not for that because it is actually you need to become our voice outside. And you need to, because tomorrow you could become Mashallah, professors in economics. Maybe one of you may, or about not one of you, many of you may go and get the Nobel Prize, right? So recently, um, you know, recently we had this, right? We There was a two professors, actually, they are getting the Nobel Prize. Do you know why they are getting the Nobel Prize? Let's ask this question, yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, please, go ahead. Uh, yeah, if I'm not mistaken, they're getting the Nobel Prize for um, for re rewriting the models for uh, auction. Mashallah. Okay. Good. Good. And that's all I can remember. <laughs> okay. I think you got the point. Of of course. Any anybody else want to add more? Okay. Okay, I know you're all very good listeners, yeah? <laughs> okay, so I think, uh, yeah, you are right. Thank you so much for, for telling me that, uh, representing the whole class, actually, you are telling. Yes, you know, uh, you know, these two uh, gentlemen, uh, professors, actually talking about, you know, auction and uh, also the practices, especially they, they improve the theory at the same time. They also improve uh, the practices. That's 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 the reason why it's not only about writing. It is also about the um, you know going into uh, going into the industry and then you know understanding it and then showing the practices so that you know uh, if someone uh, put it in this way, uh, the way that I I understood, I, I just want to convey to you. Uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong. You know, if someone want to um, buy a land um because there is a well of oil for example let's say i don't know that, that example i don't i don't think is the right example to 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 to, to say for the purpose of uh, sustainable development gold we should be stopping uh, uh fossil fuel usage isn't it but anyway that was the example given in in in, in their work uh, let's say if someone is actually buying um well of oil well now now how he is going to uh, now now it, it's coming for the bidding auction is there uh, let's say they are saying that uh, this land for 1 billion uh, and then you can you, but the problem there is actually you don't know how much oil in there you will only know how much oil in there only after you buy the land and then you have to um, see yourself inside and check yourself then only you will know how much oil inside because it is not quite obvious in 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 our fiqh terminology we say that the mabi'ah is not actually determined it is not it is still you know classified i mean it is not actually clearly explicitly is determined huh? so the mabi'ah is actually something we call it mubham or something right so so now they are bringing that auction so now how um, they also bring, uh, they also talk about winner's curse, right? So the winner's curse is there. Uh, if someone buy it for the money that he paid, but he bought it more than that, or he bought it less than that. So they are, they are bringing some mechanism to help uh, to save both sides, uh, buyer and seller. So this is the idea, actually, to get the Nobel Prize. So I was just thinking, you know, um, uh, when I was uh, reading this, you know, what... Um, what 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 i remember it reminds me uh one of the it is not one of the it is the uh, the highest the biggest corruption of all time in india i think I, 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 how many of you from india is there any any student from india i don't think anybody from india no okay don't hide yourself if you are from india okay um, you know, b back in India in 2008 and 2010, I think there was a case, you know, they were selling this um, 2G spectrum, 
you know this 2G and 3G now we have 5G right 4G and 5G so that time it was a 2G and 3G so there was um, there was a 120 companies they wanted to buy uh, this 2G spectrum you know license or maybe you know there is a, it's between the country and the satellite and these um, for example Maxis also uh, one of them do, who bought that uh, 2G and 3G from India and then there are so many other companies also bought it but when they were doing this auction they 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 they, they bring the price of 2001 instead of the price for the future so just imagine they didn't determine the because government is selling to the private and private bought it bought that auction in those during the auction there was a bidding going on those private companies started buying with, because the government was able to give in the price of 2001 so just imagine because of that corruption maybe some corruption happening in between um, because of that do you know how much india lost 40 billion us dollar just imagine 40 uh, 40 billion us dollar India lost because of that auction bidding. So it's a kind of corruption. Somebody just for few dollars and cents, <laughs> just for the few dollars and cents, I think, you know, they, they sold the entire country, you know, the, the telecommunication to the private and private companies started making money. SubhanAllah, today you must know which company is making money. Now who is making money? Come on, tell me. Now I'm talking to you and you are listening. <laughs> you are listening. You are listening from me, and then there's the internet going on. So tell me who is making money. You already know who is making money, right? <laughs> right? Uh, exactly. Oh. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Please go ahead. Google. Is it only? Yeah. Google. Google is there, but is it only Google? Internet, internet companies of course internet companies actually working for Google of course Google Google will not take money from you Google will take money from the, the companies <laughs> maybe you look like you know Google's are free or because even myself also um, the reason I always want to go for Italian the reason why because Italian even though we have issues it is ours Right, people. I know some people. They want to go for Google Classroom, this and that. I, but I, I feel reluctant. Sometimes I feel myself that okay, why should I give? Why should I share all those documents through Google Classroom? Because Google Classroom is not actually our classroom. It's a Google's classroom, right? So that's why, even though we have issues in Italian, so please bear with us. It will be okay because Italian is ours. So when we start um when we uh, start um devaluating devaluing uh, our our own uh, things then i know the other things will come up so this is actually the idea of you know telling you by the way so as i told you who is making money now is actually the telecommunication you look at future if there is no classes for another two three semesters just imagine you will be spending too much for your internet now i think maybe like four months ago you had a different package now you have different package right am i right your parents now eager to spend more money into internet am i right so i think everybody say yes yeah because that's why the things now is getting this way so now this is one of the examples that i wanted to give you for this auction anyway somebody got somebody actually got this nobel prize you know of course economist i think you're all economists i think that's why we're all big student that's why you are taking this subject so i'm just telling you if you have a very good idea you need to sell that idea into today's economic today's conventional economy it's okay don't you don't have to you don't have to worry about uh, today's economics it's not islamic economics no you bring you bring your value into today's economics that that's that's all we want that's all we want. You don't have to work under so-called Islamic economics or Islamic. You need to understand that what we have done last time, we have done it. All the scholars that we are going to learn, those scholars, you know, they, they were doing it because there was a necessary necessity and then they, they were able to deliver it. They didn't actually, they never make it into, you know, the, the name of Islamic. So to, in, to, in, my, in my humble opinion, I will tell you, don't, 
uh, I mean, be Islamic, but don't name it Islamic. You don't have to name everything Islamic. You know, you don't have to come up with Islamic hospitality, Islamic tourism. Don't sell it, you know. Don't sell Islam. <laughs> Just do it. Just do it, you know. Just become, be one, become one. So, you, so, so what exactly we need to do today is actually, you know, looking into this. For example, these two uh, gentlemen, professors, was able to see you know, um, the mutual concern should be there. Uh, both buyers and traders, buyers and sellers, has to get 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 that equal profit. It shouldn't be like one guy is getting more profit. Look, that is the value. That because these two people they started fighting for it, fighting for the. They said auctions are good, but most of the time, it's not both parties are happy. Like like gambling, right? In gambling, there is no way that both parties will be happy. You, you, are you telling me you can just? There is no way that you know you can stop this gambling. There is no way that you know you can stop this interest. For example, the, the banking sector, the interest, everything. I I want you to just come up with the solution where actually you can you can you can tell because based on the value, you say the value is this because both parties must be happy, but it's not happening. One party is happy, the other party is actually, uh, you know, holding the thing, but it's not, it's not generating anything. So, so to avoid this, so they started working for many, many years, and today they are getting the Nobel Prize. So now, tell me, is this is it not Islamic? <laughs> they, of course, they are not Muslim, but what they have done is Islamic, right? Yeah, looking into the values and then both parties must be happy. These are the things. So now you can actually bring all these kind of things. Anyway, this is what actually we need to look into this. So look at this uh, figure. If you look at this figure, you will understand that, you know, Greek ideas were there. Of course, Bible were coming. Yes, of course. Uh, you know, um, then uh, you have these uh, uh, scholastics like we were, we were telling. But before this uh, uh, Bible, and the Greek philosophy become into a scholasticism according to the timeline the Muslim has contributed a lot because Muslims are the one because let me tell you this if you agree a uh, scholars scholastic scholars yeah like Aquinas, Thomas Aquinas if the scholastic scholars were able to learn everything from Greek I don't think because Greek was using a different language and the, the language of these scholastics scholars very different now when i don't know their language how am i supposed to actually learn things their ideas so now the big question mark is how these uh, scholastic scholars were able to learn this greek philosophy uh, so they translate were, this. Yes. sorry we translate this Exactly. Thank you so much. So they were able to understand this, you know, um, uh, through the translators. And remember, when we say translators, their job were not only translating. They didn't translate word by word, but they translated the idea. And then they changed the idea. So many scholars learn Greek ideas and then bring into Sharia and then makes into something and then they started practicing applying applying then they started writing into other languages then the scholastic scholars were able to take it from there then the merchantism came then physiocracy came then adam smith became the product of that all right let me just um show you the last one for today okay here you can see clearly how it actually became um by looking at you know greek ideas 300 bc biblical uh, sources are there uh, then you have scholastic so but before this scholastic happens right you can see my cursor right before this scholastic happened then you have these muslim scholars who learn from greek philosophies but these muslim scholars they learn from quranic teaching and from sunnah right these muslim scholars were able to give it to the scholastic scholars and then legendary scholars then from there you have physiocrats is like classical economists then mainstream economists again we have today what we are talking we are saying today islamic economics as a discipline 
it actually came directly from Quran, directly from Muslim. This is what we are talking. But we need to also understand how this, you know, Muslim scholars, how they have contributed into scholastics, then merchantalists, then physiocrats, then you have classical economists like Adam Smith, then you have mainstream economy. So this is actually what actually we are actually going to uh, see, fill the gap, find that timeline. And uh, this is how actually uh, we are going to uh, see for a few classes. Then we are going directly into those scholars, their writing. From there, we are going to see, you know, what are their uh, economic views on this, particularly one by one. Then your plates are full, but you need to know how to make your recipe. Right now, you need to know how to make and then give it to others. So you, you will be given all those uh, studies, all those works. Now we need to we, we, we need to decide whether I want to um, portray myself as the Islamic economic scholar or should I portray an economic scholar but I bring the value in into my work. So this is all the things that you need to decide later. But this is actually what the summary of you know this uh, this 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 upcoming uh, chapter. Yeah, inshallah. So in next classes, we will be inshallah discussing starting from uh, ancient Greece. Uh, we will be talking about the major tenets of Greek philosophers. What are the tenets of Greek philosophy? Then you will be able to see. Uh, is it exactly like what Islam talks? Is it exactly? Because there are so many similarity you will see when we talk about uh, Greek philosophy. Then we will talk about one by one the scholars of Greek philosophy. Then you will see that what are the what are the similarities that found between other uh, in between our scholars and Greek philosophers. And then slowly we will move into uh, scholasticism. Then we will talk about physiocrats and slowly then we will talk about that's the entire brief of, you know, the uh, before we go into Islamic economic scholars, then we will start with Abu Yusuf. Yeah, inshallah. All right. So I will just stop here. So inshallah, if you have any questions, please, you can ask me now. Uh, we have uh, uh, 15 more minutes. Yeah, inshallah.